Way back in 1970, Bill Graham, the famous promoter, had a audition night every month where like 20 acts would play 20 minutes each. The locals come in free and beer's a buck or something. And you're trying to get an opening act job from Bill Graham. I met Bill and played some basketball with him. And this is when, you know, I was 18, or I think it was, yeah. But, Bill, but um, Steel Mill with Bruce Springsteen was on that bill that night, auditioning. So I, I kind of became aware of Bruce. I followed him through the 70s. I go to see him play with the E Street Band at the bottom line, 74, 75, and always was an admirer of him. And of course, E Street Band became quite a great, um, you know, arena act, playing arenas and very successful. And uh, I always, I go back and say hi, and I always loved Bruce and w really respected him and loved him as a songwriter and a band leader. And, you know, to make a really long story short, fast forward to 84, Steve, Stevie Van Zant went solo to uh, do a solo album. He's a great solo artist, and he'd never done that. And after a while, you got to get it out of here. It builds up like bile and nothing to do with me. Uh, he made that decision, and, and fortunately, I got a call from Bruce and went in and played a couple of days with the band and wound up being the replacement guitarist. Uh, this is just all a month before the Born in the USA tour which is a great album. I'd been up to see Bruce in New Jersey just to visit and jam. I was a little down because um, in the early 80s, after making good albums that got critical acclaim and doing good shows live, same thing with Grin. Look, you don't make us money. You don't have hit records, so there's no more record deals for me. And you know, at that point, I was being called a dinosaur. So it was kind of a startling thing in the early 80s. And I called Bruce and he could tell I was a little down. I said, why don't you come up and hang for the weekend? And we did. And uh, this is in like 83. And he just finished Born USA. And we listened to it all weekend. We went and jammed in bars and talked. And um, Anyway, years, years ago, uh, years before that in L.A., I was at um, the Sunset Marquee before it became famous with the Whiskey Bar, this unknown hotel that had a kitchenette that I lived in a lot and go to Barney's Beanery, a watering hole bar where you could play video games, drink and write, whatever. And um, one day Bruce, uh, had <clears throat> I ran into Bruce there and <clears throat> he said, um, I just finished this uh, album, uh, Gary U.S. Bonds. And we took a drive up the coast, listened to it. It was, it was brilliant. Bruce, Bruce wrote a lot of the songs and produced it. And we took a break way up the coast, walked up a sand, big sand dune, looked out at the ocean and just talked. And um, we talked about my days with Neil Young after the gold rush, tonight's the night. And I just pointed out that, yeah, at a young age, I remember going to work with David Briggs to Neil's house in Topangon after the gold rush and thinking, it's nice not to be the band leader. You know, it's nice not to be the boss every day of your musical life. And, you know, just play piano, sing harmonies, not be the, the heavy. And I, I remember that, and I talked to Bruce about it, and I think he filed it away. And anyway, fast forward to 80... Three, I, we kind of revisited that type of conversation. And months later in 84, I think it was May, when Steve went solo, he gave me a call and very low key said, why don't you come up and we'll jam with the band a little bit. And when he said jam with the band, uh, I didn't bust him about it or ask more about it, but I just figured maybe it was an audition. And it turned out to be kind of that. He was looking for a, a guitarist to replace Stevie uh, who went solo and I got the job. Uh, it was a dream come true again. We did the Born USA tour, and of course, it exploded in one of the biggest records of all times. And Bruce, who promised never to leave the arenas and play stadiums because they were too big and not intimate enough, made the decision to, to, to meet ticket demand to play stadiums. I played stadiums in 82 or 3 with the Trans Tour with Neil Young all over Europe. 79, I did a, a Who tour and played stadiums all over Europe. So I was used to playing stadiums. But anyway, another you know gift from heaven to be in a great band, just like the Neil Young bands at a very young age. You know, thanks to the E Street Band, I went into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the E Street Band. Um, look, I, I think it's it's mixed feelings. Part of me is um, it was always a little strange. Like I remember when Bruce brought us to his induction to the to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and we played. I'd never been invited. No one even asked me to buy a ticket. And the only reason I got in, because I was playing with Bruce Springsteen. 
And so the idea that here's these guys in tuxedos on one end saying, no, 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 you go over there, you don't belong. In fact, you better not come in the building. There's something a little strange and on rock and roll, you know, let your freak frag fly to that. The same side of the coin <clears throat> to acknowledge somebody's contribution musically and share it with the world and maybe turn other people onto it. I think it's a good acknowledgement.